go to 1789, you had the French Revolution. They came out with this really beautiful French Declaration on the Rights of Man and Citizen. And they had some fantastic ideas in this declaration. Um, they again said that rights were inalienable. They said that they were sacred rights of man. And I think really interestingly, they said that rights were the foundation of all government. And we actually see this coming up quite a bit around this time period, late 1700s, um, with social contract theorists, right? Thomas Hobbes, John Locke. The idea here is that you give up certain things to your government, right? You don't have absolute liberty anymore. So we all pay taxes, right? We agree to follow laws. You might have a really lovely car that I'm kind of eyeing in the parking lot, but I'm not going to go steal it because you, I'm going to go to jail, right? I don't have absolute liberty. But in... Uh, it's a two-way street, right? So if I promise to do these things, the government gives me things too, right? So roads and post offices and public education and all that good stuff, stability that comes with society. But one of the things that the social contract says is that governments are supposed to be the protectors of my human rights. And so from this perspective, if a government violates our human rights or lets somebody else violates them and doesn't intervene as our protector, they're no longer a legitimate government, right? They're not upholding their social contract. And so this is really important, especially when we start talking about things like, you know, military intervention in a country where there's a genocide or something like that. The idea that maybe that government no longer has the right to be a government anymore. Another thing that was interesting about this French declaration is uh, it, it talked about rights in terms of a human community. So you didn't have rights because you were a French citizen or because you lived in France. You had rights because you were human, and that's it, right? Um, that in itself was enough to give you these rights. But of course, you know, for everybody in this room, I'm sure they, you know, you've gone on TV, you've watched the news, you've read the newspaper, you're aware of the fact that even though we might have these great human rights, at least on paper, that doesn't mean that they're always protected. And that's true today, just like it was true a couple hundred years ago. So for example, in France, we had this beautiful, beautiful French declaration with all these very, very pretty ideas. And then that was immediately followed up by the terror, right? You had this French government where anyone who spoke out, about, uh, excuse me, spoke out against the government was tortured. They were imprisoned. They were executed by guillotine. It was a very, very scary time in France. And it's very ironic that it happened right after this great declaration was announced. Um, if we, we look across time, including today, we see a lot of groups that are still denied their full rights, such as the rights to political participation, right? Children can't vote. People who are deemed insane, uh, foreigners, the imprisoned, a lot of different groups don't enjoy their full rights, and there's reasons for that, right? Um, but there have also been a lot of cases where, you know, we had these beautiful declarations, um, and we had things happening like slavery, Right? There were a lot of groups that were not covered by these declarations. They were not covered by this idea of human rights. Um, it was often you know, slaves, free blacks, sometimes religious minorities, and always, always, always women.